And it is a pleasure for some of us to have our next guest here, Sam Kennedy, the president of the Boston Red Sox. Hi, Sam. Good morning, everybody, except for Chris. Welcome uh, to spring training. Welcome there to spring. W- welcome to spring training. Uh, you guys squash your beef? Is that beef and squash? Uh, listen, I, I smiled and gave him the handshake, and all good. All right. It's a new year. We're uh, we're moving on. I, I, I have no personal beef with Sam. <laughs> <laughs> but lots of other songs. people do, so all good. All listen, good, Chris. I think, listen, I think oftentimes, uh, you know, keeping it as Wiggy would say, 100 um, you you end up being the spokesperson for this ownership group, and I'm sure that that is a can be a difficult thing to do. And well, uh, it's, give me a break. It's better than a real job. I yeah. mean, it's an honor and a privilege to be a part of this organization. It's sure. been 23 great years, and got to take the good with the bad. It's been a tough uh, off season. I know there's a lot of frustration and anger and passion. <laughs> That's what we expect here. So yeah. um, it's uh, I never take it for granted, even for a minute. I mean, John Henry uh, was here or is here. Um, it, it, and I and I, I feel like from the outside looking in, I think there are some fans and some of us in the media who just say, hey, we would love to hear from John Henry or, or whoever kind of what the strategy is. Is that something that you guys talk about internally? Yeah, listen, we, we do. And, and John and Tom uh, have um, <laughs> over the years spent a lot of time with the media. There's been times when they, they've talked, they haven't talked. Um, you know, look, at the end of the day, if we're doing the right things and the team is competitive on the field, we don't have um, these issues about whether ownership is talking or not talking or what are they saying or how are they saying it. We just need to be competitive and do the right things. And we haven't the last couple of years. So all the frustration, the animosity, the anger, the passion, that's why Boston is the best sports market in the world. And we have to take these periods of time where there's uh, frustration and and disappointment uh, with a grain of salt and recognize it's rooted in a place where our fan base all across New England loves the Boston Red Sox. We love the Patriots, the Celtics, the Bruins, uh, and it it just goes with the territory. So, look, I can tell you, and and Chris and I, you know, I I was joking. I don't know if Chris was smiling. We we talked about it on winter weekend. (laughs) The part that we do take – Personally, and that's hard, and it's it's our fault. I got it. Like someone like me needs to contain their emotions. You get personally <laughs> upset when people say you're not trying, and and but I thought about that, and we need to realize that people equate spending and big free agent deals with trying and 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 investing in the team. We understand that, so um, that's on us, and we need to go out and and, and prove it and uh, get yeah, this so market excited about this team. That's what I'm saying to you is that we do equate that. So we look at and say this team finished in last place with a payroll of $225 million as constructed right now. The payroll is $205 million. You said the payroll is most likely going to be less this year. I think to to share the strategy and say, listen, we think we can win with a lower payroll, and the reason why we want to have that l- lower payroll is X would be helpful. Yeah, it's a great question. I mean, look, the, it's it's where we are in terms of the evolution of this team. With the young players that we have, we're out trying to sign and extend um, a lot of our young players. We've had guys that over the last couple of years um, didn't contribute or had injuries, so we feel like we have veteran guys like Trevor Story, like Rafi Devers, like Nick Pavetta who's going to go out and have a great year uh, that can be leaders on this team, and we do have have a good young core coming along. Now, that doesn't mean we weren't out in free agency trying to match up. Yamamoto is an example. We didn't get there. That's on us. No excuses. Yep. Um, and we do have financial parameters that we that we lay out every single year, just like WEEI, I'm sure, has a budget <laughs> that you lay out each and it every year. It goes down every year. By the year. way, who's getting Our, the Capitol Grill tab tonight? Uh, uh, that, that is Ken Lair. <laughs> okay, okay, all right. But, uh, it's going to be on me. Ken. There's no way Ken is paying that. Or the Red Sox could, and, could pick it up. And well, you know, <laughs> we're, uh, we're, not, we're not above bribing <laughs> people. Yeah, <laughs> well, think about that. A, I don't think I didn't think about that walking in. Um, but look, it, it, we have had seasons where we've had big splashes, big free agency signings you know i think about uh, dice k i think about the trade for chris sale that is a part of it and we've had some additions to this team this off season we have not gotten there on a big free agent splashy signing do we think we can be competitive with this group of young guys that we have the veteran players that we have in that clubhouse, yes, we do. Do we have the ability to go out and add to this team um, before the season starts? Yes. Do we have the ability to add at the trade deadline? Yes, we do. 
The people talk a lot about philosophy uh, changing. The, the philosophy here for 23 years, the strategy is to build around a core group of young homegrown players and add free agents at a period of time where you think you're ready to take that next step and, and win a World Series. And that's worked really well over the last two and a half decades, and we're going to stay with that, that philosophy. By the way, Chris Sale was lights out yesterday. Yeah, of course. Uh, He's going to win the Cy Young this year. Yeah. <laughs> Any way to get him back? Or yeah. <laughs> He was my hookup uh, for golf down here, so I, I have to call him, actually. Uh, whether or not we hear from ownership is one thing, but we have been hearing from players, and you bring up a leader like Rafi Devers, and, and he's been pretty outspoken about how he feels this offseason has gone. How do you guys feel about that when you hear frustration coming from the guys, especially the leaders in this clubhouse? Yeah, I, I, I think it shows you just how competitive they are, the fact that these guys want to win a World Series each and every year. Um, you know, we, we stepped up and made a $331 million commitment commitment to Rafael Devers because of the type of player he is, the type of person he is. That was a the, the largest contract that our organization has ever um, given out. And, he, you know, he, he wants to win each and every year. And I, and I get it. And uh, it's on us to make sure he understands the strategy. As Greg, you, you talked about that. Look, we're, we're, we're building this thing uh, for uh, hopefully 2024 to be incredibly competitive and for the future. Um, but look, I, I understand. You know, we, we all would love to just snap our fingers and have uh, the biggest free agents uh, in baseball but that's arrive But that's the way you used to do it. Um, I take exception with that. I mean, okay. listen, there's been some – well, it's just the truth. I mean, there's 23 years we've had all sorts of different off seasons you know going from 2012 into 2013 you know for example we had a couple of smaller signings that really worked out and we shocked the world and won the world series we've had other years where we've had big free agent signings and we haven't gotten to yeah. the postseason so um Look, we, we, we understand the frustration, we appreciate the passion, uh, but we, we just need to go out and win some baseball games. Sam, I don't think it's the brochure. Like, I don't think it's the packaging that the fans don't like. And I don't think it's that John Henry doesn't speak or speak. I, that, you know, we like that in the media. I get it. Yep. But it's that we all see that everything's changed. Whether there have been seasons and ups and downs, fans here know exactly the last 23 years. I don't know a single Sox fan that isn't grateful to you, John, Tom, Larry, everybody, Theo, Tito, everybody that brought the World Series here. It's just that every year we see things in the way the roster is put together, the importance the team has when it comes to financial investment, and the now the manager of the team who's entering a walk year, all of these things on, a, on their own would have been the biggest story in Boston 10 years ago. Now... People are just, in Springfield, we saw people enraged at this direction. So I guess it's what direction is this, and will there be a day where the Red Sox return to the investment both financially and in terms of the way the roster is put together every year? Yeah, I hate to say that's a fair question. Um, (laughs) And the short answer is yes. Short answer is yes, because the strategy is very much – building around the uh, young core of, of homegrown players and then bringing in free agents to complement that, international signings to complement those guys. So uh, the short answer is yes. Yeah. There, there, there absolutely will be that day. It didn't happen this off season. You know, I mentioned the pursuit of, of certain uh, players, which yep. I probably shouldn't have, but, uh, but yeah. just to point out, we, 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 didn't, we didn't get there, but th- there will be a time when a splashy signing uh, may happen. But I would not sleep on this year's Red Sox team, because, as, you, as you point out, because the package of players, the roster that we have, the rotation, the back end of the bullpen, in terms of how you see this team, I, I wouldn't sleep on the 2024 Red Sox. But yes, there will be a day where we, where we in the future have a a very splashy uh, off season and 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 that will be that'll make everybody happy in the moment but you know what won't make people happy if we do that and we win 76 games and we don't uh, put ourselves in the postseason so we, we got to get into the postseason we got to play baseball in october and everything else will take care of itself you, you have the zoom with jordan montgomery is, is that a guy that you think you might be able to get this season i don't think i'm allowed to talk about okay. free agent pursuits a player like that but yeah yeah i mean I'm, listen you know brez is um uh, working hard continues to work hard uh and it's my job to come on the radio and not break major league baseball yeah. rules okay all right <laughs> but what but just the financial component so you know that the team isn't or you don't know you the the the, the prognostication is that this team is not the favorite to win the division yeah i understand that they may not be the most talented maybe the least talented 
why that not? I'm not? That I'm not sure about. But but, but I mean, let's see. Let's we'll see. see right? But yeah, why we'll not see. address that? Why why enter the season? with a roster that's not at the top of the division. Look, you, you have a certain amount of resources, right? And you can allocate them um, across the balance of the roster. And that's what we have to do. You, you can, it's nice to say, go out and just spend hundreds of millions of dollars on a free agent so you can um, say that you did it. <clears throat> We're going to, look, Greg said it. We're going to spend uh, well over $200 million uh, on our baseball operation at the major league level, spend a lot more on top of that in terms of in- infrastructure and, and scouting and player development and facilities and all that. Um, but again, fans don't want to hear about that. They, they, they want to focus on the team. They want to focus on us being competitive. Uh, and if you look as, at the package, as you said, Chris, if you look at the lineup and the roster, you're starting to see a young, more athletic, defensive-minded team, hopefully that's healthy, that's key, uh, take that field on opening day. And I think there's a lot of things to be excited about. Sam, is the philosophy not just for the Red Sox, but in Major League Baseball changing financially? Because when you start to look at guys, you brought up Jordan Montgomery, you bring up Blake Snell. These guys, I think Montgomery wants seven years, 175. Blake Snell wants like more than 250. And if you start to look at maybe where the money's going, is it that teams are now starting to say, we're going to reduce the amount of money that we're giving some of these players like a, a Jose Altuve. He signs up like a contract that you look at and you go, maybe three years ago, that might have been $50, $60 million more. Is that philosophy changing unless you're the L.A. Dodgers? Listen, the the way the, the, the industry of baseball works, we're, we're roughly a $12 billion industry. I don't have the exact numbers, but roughly 50% of the, the revenues go to player costs and, and, and the other 50% go to the expenses to cover the industry. This is a, 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 about a break-even industry, um, and that's really the focus. The revenues that get generated from our loyal fans, from people that watch on TV, people that spend their hard-earned money at Fenway Park on, on beer and, and hot dogs, and, and, and that goes into Player pay, it goes two places, player payroll, and it goes into the renovations and preservation of Fenway Park. Around Major League Baseball, I can't speak for the other groups, uh, but teams have an obligation to invest the revenues they generate into player payroll. That's what the Red Sox do. That's been our focus. That's not going to change. Um, and, and that's really important that we honor that commitment uh, to our fan base. I don't want to speak for everybody else in the room, but for me, when you guys parted ways with Heim Bloom, I think a lot of fans and, and people in the media thought that the philosophy was going to change in a big way, that this was going to be a big splash of, of the off season, And it seems like it's kind of more of the same. Was that the change? Is, is, is going from Heim to Craig Breslow, is there going to be a shift? Are we going to see that? Or I, I guess a lot of people don't understand why make that change if you're going to do more of the same. Yeah, I, I think a lot of the things that are happening behind the scenes um, are, are, are different. But, um, you know, look, we, we, we parted ways with, with Heim last September. He's a, um, a, a great baseball mind, a great person. And I don't want to sort of go back in history with Brez, we brought in somebody who um, has a particular expertise in pitching, number one, which is a big need in the organization. Number two, this guy's a World Series champion uh, two times over. He's only on the roster a day, I think, in 2007. But big part of that 2013 run, he knows what it takes uh, to win as a player in Boston. That's not something we've had in that general manager role before, something we're very excited about. Um, and he's been excellent so far. I think we need to give him a chance uh, to to build this team sort of in his uh, image and 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 in a way that uh, brings us back to what he knows is the goal, and that's winning baseball games in October. Does Theo have an office down here? <laughs> He's got the best job in sports. What, you know, what I, is I, it? I, 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 <laughs> well, I, I, clearly, I need a lot of advice. So he, he is he is a senior advisor. To, I'm not okay. sure he's helping me with our media relations oh, uh, PR strategy, um, but no, he's. It, it's actually been 
awesome to uh, have him back and have him available. It's a part-time role where he is uh, helping uh, John and Tom and me and uh, Craig Breslow here in Boston, but he's also helping um, our other sporting operations leaders across the Fenway Sports Group portfolio of well, companies. And, and it led to two nights Pearl Jam uh, at, at Fenway. <laughs> oh, he gets credit uh, for that too. But you, lost right, that, yeah. but you lost Zach Brown to Gillette. How did that happen? Hey, listen, oh, there, there, there's enough music to go around. We, we, I mean, that's, uh, we'll be – I'll be the, I love Zach Brown. We'll yeah. be at, we'll be at Gillette for that. Pearl Jam coming to Fenway is great. So see, Theo's uh, already paying off. Noah Kahan. <laughs> Noah. Oh, my daughter is like, Dad, can I get two hundred tickets? Yeah, for Noah? you could help us out. That'd be great. Oh, yeah. Right for other reasons. But yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> if maybe this is a Theo question, but you said that the money goes back into the Fenway Park or the roster. Last year, you had a bigger payroll than this payroll. I saw in the Globe you said that the season ticket renewals were up. Yeah. Over last year. So why is the payroll down if the finances are better this year than last year? Well, finances are, are not better. But again, I'm not going to talk about uh, specific financial parameters or, or, or our budget. What I will tell you is the revenues that we generate from the Boston Red Sox are reinvested into the Boston Red Sox baseball operation, our operating expenses, and Fenway Park. Um, and that has been consistent for 23 years. Um, this is not a profit oriented business, the baseball business. This is a, uh, a responsibility, a stewardship by John, Tom and Mike to do everything they can to put a winning great product on the field. And that will continue in 2024 and beyond. But the team's worth $4.5 billion. I mean, they've made 10x of the investment. I mean, it's certainly not been a, you know, a not-for-profit ever. <laughs> well, you know, what something is worth is what someone will pay for it down the road, but you have an operation, right? You have operating revenues and you have operating expenses, and uh, those have to line up and uh, each and every year, and I can assure you that those revenues are going in uh, to, to, to the player expenses. Speaking of what it's expenses. worth, have you been listening to the show this morning? Uh, I listened to, uh, I was hearing uh, about the Capitol Grill. I heard no. that part, but okay. I, what what else? We had Rob Hale on earlier. Oh, the best. The, the, Rob's uh, the best. Uh, I mean, could we do it like four and a half billion dollars, <laughs> like a deal, uh, is that, is, uh, like somewhere in that neighborhood? Is it? I can tell uh, you that Fenway Sports Group, John Henry, Tom Warner, Mike Gordon, yours truly. Uh, Love it or hate it, we are not going anywhere. <laughs> All right. We are fully committed yeah. uh, to the Boston Reds. This is a privilege. It's a privilege to uh, be a part of the ownership group and the operating team of the Red Sox, and we're not going anywhere. We just have to uh, get the team back where it belongs. Would there be any – sorry, would, any, any interest in somebody like Trevor Bauer who you could get from a, a very affordable perspective and, and maybe add some – Again, I think I've lucked out on this one uh, in terms of not being able <laughs> you can't to – Talk about uh, okay. players that are um, that are free agents and and, and available. So, um, all right. Don't want to well, touch that. No, I was going to say, Sam. Like it, when you look at this team in years past, like they're always somewhere top five when it comes to hitting. And you know, I think the question marks become pitching. And you look at aces and who's the ace of a rotation because then maybe he elevates everybody's play. I know that you guys are trying to work on an extension for Brian Bale. What's the expectations? Is that like, is he the kid that you're looking at? I know him and Yamamoto, basically the same age, right? Is he the player that you're looking at in-house to be the ace? Take it, the bull by the horns to say, because if you can play at a high level, maybe that elevates, you know, some of the other guys on that rotation. Is that the expectations for a player like him? Yeah, without putting uh, any expectations on it. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. <laughs> this guy, uh, to me, uh, appears to have the makeup um, and all the qualities of a number one uh, ace. But again, I don't get paid to make those baseball operations decisions. Thank God that's Craig's uh, area. And Alex Cora talked about the rotation um, and the guys who are lining up at the top of the rotation and, and other guys who are fighting for that fourth and fifth spot. So, But Bayo should be right there. We're really excited about him. Uh, he brings a great energy to the mound every night and, and excited about what he might be able to do. Uh, Tanner Houck threw a couple perfect innings here Monday. L listen, we'll, we'll go as far as, uh, as health takes us. Um, if we can stay healthy, I think we got a real shot. Okay. 
All right. Well, thanks, thanks for taking Appreciate the time. Thanks, Great guys. to see you. Good luck. I All hope right. dinner at 4.30 tonight. Uh, yeah. 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 Early bird special. Florida style. For Greg. Uh, yeah. Curtis would like, if you'd like to join us for dinner, you twin, and Curtis twin, can sit next to each other. Twi- twin Peaks at yeah. 11. Uh, yeah. And yeah. Capitol Grill. Uh, just bring yeah. some yeah. merch. Yeah. 2X. Yeah. Merch. All right, oh, Wiggy <laughs> wants some merch. Uh, 2X. Five <laughs> mentions about free sweatshirt. Hey, by the way, real quick before, and on the business side of things, anything, What what what's new at Fenway Well, when we get there in a month? The biggest thing is, well, the continuation of the development around the neighborhood and the, and the music venue and the way that uh, the bleacher sort of overlook connects in. But the biggest thing, the biggest marketing initiative uh, we have right now is this Netflix project. I mean, it is unbelievable the level of access that they have. I think it's a big risk for the organization uh, to take, but it's. Um, I think it'll be great for baseball. Mm. I think it'll be great for our players to humanize. You guys talked about Liam this morning. Yeah. So our fan base getting to know these players and what it's like to grind. Um, I'm a sucker for any of these documentaries. I love them. Um, and so it'll be exciting. It doesn't come out till 2025, obviously, but it, it, the level of access is unprecedented. And so that's a full-time job for your friend Colin Birch and, yeah. and his teammates. All right. Well, we know you look forward to the front office report every Thursday. We'll be there soon <laughs> it, enough, it, Sam Kennedy. All right. All right. Greg, the mustard. What? We need to get the mustard oh, yeah. back Can at we Fenway get, Park. Yeah, what, the spicy brown. Uh, the, like, what, what, I don't, what's what's, the, what's what, Curtis's position on Curtis, it? Curtis, how do you, how do you I, I'm, I'm agnostic. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, can we, we need please? To get back. What is the issue? We'll yeah. take we'll take it under advice. Right. I mean, honestly, it's mustard. Yeah, it's well, good mustard. I mean, there are people mustard. who love it, people mm-hmm. who want it back. Yeah. Bring the mustard can back. You, can you believe you get paid to do this? No, I really can't. <laughs> I don't. I actually don't get paid. <laughs> Some of us don't. <laughs> That's not saying. All right, oh, maybe no. that'll be in the, that'll be in the next uh, Netflix. Netflix. No, it's going to be in Netflix. And, yeah, and right. I'm available if you need me because Dynasty didn't want to use me. All right, I'm looking forward to Dynasty. You haven't seen it yet? No. It's good. Uh, it's really good. good. 